Hi, it's Carly McAvoy. I'm talking about finding a cutoff score or cutoff value when you're given the probability or percentile. And the probability is just that area under the curve. So remember, probability always has to add up to one. And you can never have a probability that's greater than one or less than zero. It's some probability in the middle between zero and one. And so a lot of times we talk about a standard normal curve. So we have a normal curve. Uh, just like a bell shape, but when we say standard, that means that our distribution has zero as a mean and one as a standard deviation. And that makes it really easy to work with. So you can see here we have a zero mean and then um, we have standard deviations of one. So in this, this video, I'm just trying to show you how to find that value here when you know the area under the curve. So that's the opposite of what we were doing before. So what is the z-score? And the z-score is correlates to that um, where that is on this number line right so we we talk about z-scores a lot and they're associated with um, norm, standard normal curves and if we didn't say it was standard it could just be a cutoff value but for it was standard we use a z-score so it's that point that we're interested in so it, what is the z-score for the 95th percentile well here's 95th percentile and um, if it, when we're interested in 95th percentile, remember it always measures everything to the left. And so if you go into GeoGebra, you would click that left facing bracket and then enter your 0 0.95, that's 95th percentile or 95%. And then GeoGebra will give you that cutoff value here. And then depending on where you're asked to round it, it could be rounded to two or three decimal places. That's your z-score or your cutoff value. So I'm going to show you that on GeoGebra, a couple of them on GeoGebra, but I probably won't do all of them there. But if you go to GeoGebra.org and click on GeoGebra Classic, I've used this a lot and I know that probability is going to be right here for me. If you don't see it, you can click on up here and then click on, um, where is it? Here it is. Click on the three dots, sorry, and click on the probability calculator right there. And this kind of takes it all and squeezes it over to the right. If you don't like that, go ahead and click on the three dots to close things um, that you don't want up there. So if you don't want something there, just click on it and close it. Eventually you can get it back to just taking up your whole screen. When you're finished with, a, with something like this, you can always export it here um, as a picture. But it doesn't show you all of these things. It just exports your graph. So I don't love it. But anyway, when we have a, norm, a standard normal curve like this with a mean 0 and a standard deviation 1, and we want to know less than, so I'm clicking on that less than. And I want I know that the area over here is 95 or 0.95, and that's how I get that value. So it's pretty easy to do when you're in GeoGebra. Let's go back and look at another example. So another thing you might be asked to do is to find the bottom 2.5 and the upper 2.5. I don't know what program you're going to be using. Some programs you can do this in one swoop. In GeoGebra, you have to do it in two separate parts. So if they kind of said, okay, we have all these parts in the middle, find the, if we have 95% in the middle, find the 5% on either end, 5%, uh, two and a half here and two and a half here makes up that 5% on the two ends. But you'd have to do it in two separate pieces. You would go in and on your lower one and click that lower uh, left button and put in your 0 0.025, that is moving the decimal point over two places, and it will give you that. Notice that this is below zero. If we're below zero, we would expect to have a negative value. So our z-score, our cutoff value, is negative 1.96 uh, rounded. We could round that differently, whichever, whatever we're asked to round to. And then to find the second half of that, you would go into GeoGebra and do the same thing, except instead of putting uh, the less than, you would click on the greater than button and enter that 0 0.25, and that's going to show you greater than that. So it's going to go over there. So all the values that are greater than that. And that's going to be the same value, but the opposite. So this is obviously greater than zero. When it's greater than zero, we would expect a value that's positive. So we have negative 1.96 and positive 1.96. Once you know one, then you could just know that the opposite is going to be the other one.
Okay, some of these other things that I just wanted to show you, I have pictures from different programs, but you can still do all of these in GeoGebra if you want. Um, so uh, this one says, find the probability for, for Z is greater than A, if that equals, uh, the probability is 0.7224, find A. So Z is greater than A. So really it's the same kind of problem you would go in. We are talking about a, st a standard normal curve. So mean is zero, standard deviation is one. We were looking at greater than, so we would choose the greater than there. And it doesn't matter greater than equal to greater than in these, so don't have to worry about that, but you would choose that right facing bracket in GeoGebra and then put in the 0.7224 and it's gonna give you that value and then you can round it to wherever you're asked to round it to. So A would be negative 0.9. And then here we're looking at something that is less than, Z is less than B, the probability is 0 0.0192. So that's where that goes over here, 0 0.0192. We are talking about on the left side, so we would do less than or equal to and hit enter. So most of these calculated probability calculators are pretty much the same. I like this one, which is StatCrunch, because I like the pictures better than it gives, but it's not free, so I don't suggest that you use it. Um, and then this one, um, we can do this thing where we do uh, the two values on either side inside here. and. Um, and then put that in. And I don't think you have to do this. I think I was thinking of something else when I put this in. Let's go in GeoGebra and put this value in. We have um, 2892 and we want to know what's if we have areas in the center here. Let's see if we can do it and if we can't do it we'll come back and talk about what I have typed there. <clears throat> so I want to look at two values that are in between and I yeah it freezes up. You can't do anything about it because it doesn't care, it doesn't know if you're looking for uh, something that's centered over here or something that's centered over there, and so it doesn't know how to do that in GeoGebra. No problem though. Um, what we would do is go back to my example and I'll show you what I would tell you to do. I would take the one, so this area in here is 0.2892. I would take one minus that and find out that I have 0 0.71808 on either end. And then I would divide that by two, and that would tell me that I know that I have 0.3554 on either side. So I would go in, and just like I did up here when I was looking for top and bottom, instead of ending, entering 0 0.025, I would be entering 0.3554 for the bottom and then the top, and that would give me these two values here. So you have to do it a little more um, clumsily with GeoGebra, but it still works. All right, have a fantastic day. We'll talk to you next time.